XM 105, Sirius 206, the Opie and Anthony Channel. The Ron and Fez Show starts right now. All buddies, it's the Ron and Fez Show on a Friday. Ike and Tina Turner and definitely a high point in American music. River Deep, Mountain High. Everybody else heard that song and said, you know what, let's just go back to doing shit. Uh, why even bother? All right, it is a Friday on the Ron and Fez show. Uh, we'll open phone lines 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. We want to start off the show uh, sending our condolences and thoughts to Steve C. and his family uh, and everybody from the uh, ONA family. Steve is one of those guys who... Uh, was there when all the crazy shit was happening. I talked to Earl this morning. Earl uh, and Steve were always buddies, and, uh, you know, st- everybody's in a state of shock. But uh, Steve is one of those guys that knows exactly what it felt like in the old days when ONA flew way too close to the sun during all <laughs> all the fun, crazy, wild times and... Uh, know that everybody is really, really uh, in shock about this now. And it's one of those things that uh, it, it's almost too big to even let it uh, sink in. Uh, Fezzi, I know that you were very, very uh, fond of Steve, who was always nothing but, but good to, to you and me and always a good guy. He was just always so sweet to me. He was one guy. He would do, like, gay remarks to me. Like, he would always greet me with, hey, sweetie. Mm. But there was never any malice in it. It was just, he was just a big sweetheart. He he literally was a big sweet bear. Um, so, again, out to uh, everybody, all the guys on the ONA show, and, and Opie and Anthony, and uh, no matter what happens through life, there's always those people that you have certain uh, moments with. And... Uh, it's obviously uh, rough for everybody right now. Uh, all right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, uh, people writing to you, Pepper. Very, very impressed with your playlist today. Look, that's a playlist, baby, in Terabang. Playlist is up on the iBang uh, because it's a Black Friday. And... Uh, the uh, I'm already thrown off on it, uh, but the songs are already up on there. Uh, all right, eight six six run zero fez eight six six run zero fez. Uh, Chris uh, Stanley, yes, you got some presents here for us today. That's right, from Mister Chick, Belmont, and Saratoga Chick. He sent you, Ron, a what would have been a beautiful Miles Davis coffee mug except the handle broke off in transit well maybe i can use it as like a little soup cup now maybe that'll be the angle it's a very nice bitches brew what i see uh, fez you got something yes i got a mug fully intact it says i am a gay that's that it's perfect for you because you are openly gay now yeah. and Hicks, what did you get? I got a fucking sweet set of four Game of Thrones coasters. All right, all this tells me is that Chick uh, hit and hit big. And the <laughs> thing about Chick is that when he's fat and things are going well, he takes care of his friends. Well, you know what I mean? Spreads it around. Yeah, because that's found money. So, obviously, I love my Miles Davis soup cup. That... Uh, <laughs> mm, that's a fucking clam Although, shower. you know, this is a little jagged. We might want to file this down. <laughs> I certainly don't want to cut uh, cut myself. Why I'm enjoying, uh, well, this time of year, gazpacho. Ooh, gazpacho. Nice cold. It's soup. the only cold soup. Um, nothing for Pips, huh? No, Pips got the shaft. Okay, well, you know what? He's still like new guy, still catching on, but he's doing great for you, right? Oh yeah, fucking rocking. He's your favorite person that you've ever met. I love that kid so much. BK all day. He is like, to me, he is like Little Pepper in his own way. Oh. You know? I mean, obviously, not in the way that he's a gambling addict, a drug addict, uh He's got time alcoholic. to work on all that. 
But he has your work ethic. I love it. What people don't understand about uh, Chris Stanley, he bets the ponies, but he's also what we call a work pony in this business. Mm-hmm. I'll fucking bust ass. How's E-Rock doing? I know they were close. E-Rock is really, really upset. He's... I, I talked to him for a little bit. He's he's having a lot of difficulty. He's yep. having trouble talking. I want you to just say something to him. Ronnie B. Shoulders. This okay. is a place for him. If he wants to. Boom. Ronnie B. Shoulders. I will pass that along. That the shoulders are standing by. I mean, not constant. You know what I mean? Like a, a short time to lean on me. But I'll be there. It'll be one of those things where... Footprints in the sand. Uh-huh. Where were you? Yeah. Carrying you, dude. That's it. Jesus style. JC? That's right. That's I think we all learned something from Jay Moore is that we're all the son of God, not just Jesus. We learned that from his interview with the Blaze, which I see by the quizzical look on your face. You never bothered reading, <laughs> did you, Chris Stanley? I didn't see it, no. Even though he and his family adore you and have a beautiful painting of you up. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <sighs> All right. The uh, Apple... Somebody wrote to me that people with Apple products are having trouble with the site today. I don't know how all that works. I'm going to do my best to, to fix everything since also Steve Jobs passed away. I now consider myself... The modern day Steve Jobs. Whoa. That's fucking heavy shit, man. You know, also tell E Rock I also got Earl on one shoulder, so I can't have a lot of people hanging on my shoulders all the time. It's going to be available. You know what? I'm going to put a list up. All right. The Ronnie B. Shoulder list. Whoever needs to be there, there are going to be times. But within, in between each time, I like a little break for myself. We'll make a schedule, you know? We'll have fucking. Let's call it a schedule and act right. like we're English guys. Perfect. Well, then we'll go to the fucking flat. Uh, we're going to get to a lot of uh, stuff later on today. Uh, the Add It To Your Cue is going to be a new thing. Of This is small movies that you may have missed. Because most people just live off their cue now. Oh, Whether yeah. it's uh, Netflix or Apple or how many other people out there that you get movies from. Almost constant. There's a bunch where you just get fucking media just streamed to you and sent to you. Yeah, people are like, oh, add to my cue. That's it. Uh, people have these giant cues of movies. Like, yeah, it's coming. I'm just gonna burn through them. It's weird because we, you know, Fez gets a lot of DVDs signed for people. No one uses DVDs anymore. I've got a whole DVD thing at my house. I need to just throw it all out because <laughs> I don't walk over and pop in a DVD. A Netflix. So You're living in the past, buddy. You got to remember something. Technology changes on a constant level right now. It's happening constantly. I believe in the future, we will view things off of soap bubbles. Wow. That's the way I see it going down. Shit. Uh, also, Big Brother started last night, so a little later on in the show, uh, Fez is going to give us his uh, all-time five most interesting Big Brother players. This is the only reality show that we were ever fans of in our life. I fucking... I, I, I banned it for a while, but when I came back in so hard, I loved it. I love this show. Yeah, I, I'm obsessed with it. Well, you know, in Showtime, you can watch them. Late, and then you fall asleep with them. Well, it's 24 hours online, but they run it on TV at Showtime. So you can put it on, and as, as they're drifting off, you can drift off with them. And it's really nice to be able to see people uh, sleep. And that goes, that makes you go, oh, I'm a little sleepy. Now, I caught a little bit of the TV this morning, the Mike and Mike fill-ins, having an honest discussion of saying it, they absolutely believe it's going to happen, that they will tear down the Joe Paterno fucking statue, <laughs> that you can't have that statue anymore without everyone just thinking of kid touching, and they're going to cut it off at the ankles and just leave feet and ankles sitting there. Uh, too far or far enough? As no, I, I have no problem with them getting rid of that statue. That man was part of a cover-up where a dozen kids were abused, raped. I have no problem with that statue going away and not seeing the man's face. 
I think that's what we do in this country. We tend to act like we'll vilify one person instead of taking on responsibility. Obviously, that statue has nothing to do with Sandusky, nothing to do with any of that stuff. And I just think that we're a bunch of witch hunters in this country. I really love do. a witch hunt. I love yeah. fucking attacking somebody. It's great. Just fight. And unfortunately, for the people who are attacking, the guy's dead, so they have to fucking fight a statue. Right. Yeah. I mean, what more do you want? One guy's in prison for the rest of his life, and the other guy's dead. Done. Boom. What, can, what else can we give you? Make, you wouldn't cut the statue down? No. Make those kids coaches of Penn State. <laughs> the abuse victims. Well, this is, they, they all deserve money, obviously. Well, yeah, gonna but I think guy. the statue and, you know, the statue kind of belongs to the fans, and it's about whatever their program was. And let's face it, football, at the end of the day, is stupid. It's not... You know what I mean? We give it importance because it's fun, but it's a way to get away from life, uh, away from stuff. And that, to me, is between the fans of that program and and that place. It really doesn't have a lot to do with the rest of the people in the rest of the country. If anything else, I really don't even know why the guy coached as long as he did. He wasn't even a real coach. He and Bobby Bowden both... Um, or, you know, they just hung around. They just hung around. They weren't really coaching anymore. They had no place else to go. Uh, Dan, you're on the run of Fest show. Yeah, I was just going to say that the, the board is deciding between two different things. One, either cut the statue down, or two, turn it just exactly 180 degrees so it looks the other way. See ya. Okay. Wow. You know what? Uh, yeah, let's see. As if it's your joke. As if you came up with a little something. Obviously, like everything in life, you did not. I bet this... I just Google him and show Paterno statue, and a, just a random picture came up of a guy with his kid next to it. I bet that guy feels like an asshole right now. I don't think so, because Joe Paterno <laughs> did not molest any each other. <laughs> I think that's a gimme. I don't know whatever happened to that great Joe Paterno song that we had. Um... X, you were upset because Bill Nye, the science guy, got treated pretty uh, roughly on uh, CNN. Yeah. He's going on CNN to talk about climate, for, cl the, the climate problems. And just, right off the bat, this is what they had a fucking intro, poor Bill Nye. Let's talk about the political aspect of this, because if you Google your name, Bill Nye, you're, you're the kooky guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, what you're not fuck? a climatologist. Whoa. You want to defend yourself? Sure. Uh, I can read graphs, and uh, you, this, there's a couple things you can't really dispute. Uh, All right, six, let's just stop it there. Why did she have Bill Nye on his show if he's a blithering idiot? You're the kooky guy who doesn't know what he's talking about, according to Google. I don't think she really Googled the fucking guy's name. She's This woman's insane and incredibly insulting to this fucking guy who's a scientist. But again, you have some call who gets booked on your show. <laughs> I mean, we have a, a phenomenal booking department here. I would say as good as any TV network. We get tons of people Giant. who come into this place. And the difference between, you know, and I guess where we're somewhat similar like CNN is you could go on different shows. So there's a lot of people that come in here that are interesting for one reason or another. We don't want them. Some are pop culture people. Some of them are, you know, sports stars that we'd like to talk to, but we find out that they're selling something that we don't necessarily want to do a break on. But how many people do you think, just our show, what percentage of the people that we're offered do we, do we take? Jesus, it's just not... Maybe 5% yeah, tops? Yeah. Some of the lists that come through are gigantic. Yeah, just gigantic like, no, lists. No, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> and no one ever comes around anymore. In the old days, it used to be, look, you got to take this guy if you want to get this. But now there's enough stage, there, there's enough different shows that somebody will always... You know, sometimes we're the only person who will take some, somebody. Uh, other times, there's like, you know, 10 shows that want somebody. Yeah. It, so it goes back and forth. But you don't have to have somebody on your show. Why would you ask a guy to be on your show and said, if you, you we Google you, you're the nut? 
I wonder if this, just because of the fact that Bill Nye's wearing a bow tie, if she confused him with Matthew Lesko, the kooky guy with the government catalogs. I'm going to go so far, Fez, to say that nobody would make that connection other than you. I don't think there's another person who thinks Bill Nye went, is, wears a jacket that has question marks all over it. So, no. Just a quick answer. Okay. No. I don't think that that came up. Um, this guy's got a lot of fucking suits with goddamn question marks on them. I used to see him at DC all the time. Oh, He's yeah? like the fucking Riddler down there. Yeah, he lives down there, and he... he I might have even had him on one time. He just travels around selling giant books that now you can get with a couple clicks on the internet. <laughs> and you could never make it through his books, and it's all about how to save a little money here and there, and government programs, how to fucking act like y y your house is a business, and you're renting the fuck y your kid's room back to him as workspace. And it's all this kind of accounting shit that, A... Like random loophole scams? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, you would be better off just getting another job <laughs> than <laughs> acting like this. And then, B, sooner or later, it's one of those things where the IRS is going to come after you for seven years. You know what I mean? Like, one of those things where maybe you're going to get away with it for a while. But it's probably going to be an audit in your future. Yeah. Yeah, you're asking for an audit. I don't know where all the money went. And I guess if you're a CPA yourself, you know how to deal with that. But if you're a regular fucking person, no. <laughs> you're hitting over your fucking head. No. You don't even want to deal with it. <laughs> All right, let's go back over this one. This is another guy who has somebody on his show for God knows what reason. All right, when Pierce Morgan got his show, all we heard about is how fabulous he is. And up to now, uh, to me, I, not only is he not a Charlie Rose, I don't even think he's a Larry King. Not at all. And the guy got started in just fucking shitty rags, like the worst rags in Britain. Yeah, but then apparently he did some interview show over there that people were interested in. And now, like, the other day, he, you know, he'll get into these, like, he gets people to say shit. But it's like Billy Baldwin. You know, like, I don't know why that's the big deal. Uh, but here, Pierce is going at it with Robert Blake. Now, I'm... You know, everyone remembers Robert Blake from the murders. In, in the, was that like 10 years ago or something like that? Yeah. Uh, where they tried to turn it into the next OJ trial, but it didn't have that same kind of heat. Uh, but years before, he had done a show called Beretta. Uh, and he used to go on TV and just talk nutty. And he would always have an unlit s you know, cigarette. And he would talk crazy. And then he would say, that's the name of that tune. And everybody would clap. He would have like a little catchphrase. Okay. But even before that, he was Mickey on The Little Rascals when he was a little kid. <laughs> but he's always been just fucking bananas. So here he is with Pierce. Truth, if you can, does that mean I'm lying to you? I don't know. Are you? What do you think? I don't know. I, mean, I think we're going to get to some questions where... Well, tell me where I'm lying. Because if you don't know I'm telling you the truth, then you must have a little scratch in the back of your head about where I'm lying. Tell no. me where I'm lying. I'm not saying you're lying. But you're saying you don't know if I'm telling the truth. What the hell is the difference? I'm saying I've met you for, what, 20 minutes? I don't care about that. You put me on the stand. I'm telling the I truth and you, you say you're scratching the head. Why are you being so defensive? Because you just insulted me. I didn't insult you. Yes, you did. Nobody tells me I'm a liar. I didn't call you a liar. You said I might not be telling the truth. What the hell is the difference? I said I'm going to now, ask I don't you... want to take this any place special. All I want... Okay, let me say it this way. My skin is a little bit thin. Sure. Which is why I stay away from people mostly. I've never allowed anybody to ask me the questions that you're asking. Mm -hmm. I allowed you to do that because I trust you. And I would have assumed that you and that guy in your ear would trust me. And if you don't, then we better start talking about the little rascals. Perfect outline. But here's the weird thing about Robert Blake. 
He's 70 plus years old. He goes on TV. He's wearing a vest with no shirt. It's a good look. And a crazy cowboy hat. When obviously you're not on on the range right now, dude. It's fucking nighttime and you're inside. You don't need a fucking cowboy hat. And you probably could have skipped the vest and worn a shirt. Or just no vest or shirt at all. <laughs> fucking totally <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> He's only a, a small amount of material. Now, the only thing that I could figure out is that somehow, I guess, in the back of his mind, Pierce thought he was talking to Matthew Lesko. That's the only possible, possible thing that could have went down there. Uh, coming up at 2 o'clock today, it's an unmasked uh, that we did the other day that um, everybody's a buzz around here because everybody oh, yeah. has so much time. Just get fun, just getting out of the building. Just, just getting, getting out of the building, inviting in a bunch of listeners. A uh, fun ass time. Yeah, it really was. Uh, Aziz. Aziz and Sario did the unmasked with us. Young guy, still in his 20s. <laughs> Huge stand-up career, now working on his third uh, special um, hit TV show for the last four years. And movies, 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 as well as he's got an, an Apatow deal. It's ridiculous. Where Apatow bought, like, three things from him. was like, sight and scene, just start writing it up. Make it up, we'll do something, dog. Um... Let's go over here to uh, Ryan. Ryan, you're in Yeah, I'm coming about Matthew Lesko. You know, I've been listening to you guys like four years, loving it. And no matter how many times I've Googled or YouTube Fez and seen what he looks like, I cannot. He sounds exactly like Lesko. This is going to be I, a Matthew Lesko theme show today. Uh, I don't know how we're going to get around it, but Fez is going to start wearing a jacket with question marks and wear... Some uh, wacky uh, glasses. Got rock a bow tie too. Uh, Fez, let's get you into this today on a uh, quick question. By the way, I, I always thought that Matthew Lesko was a beardless Riddler. Remember, we had the bearded Riddler. Oh yeah, the beard Riddler. Uh, he gave off a beardless uh, Riddler game. All right, uh, a quick question. I got an email. Uh, from somebody. I don't know whether I would call this a moral conundrum, but let's play the old email bit uh, instead of moral conundrum. And now, Ron and Fez, the show of the future, brings you... Electronic mail. Mail sent electronically. Just looked out the window there. It looks like... Steve Leeds is working a chick out there, just taking her around, oh, show, showing the place off, and doing the thing where you come up and wave at the window like, these are my buddies in here. I know these guys. What's up, dog? What up, We tight, dog. Did you like Charlie Watts when I brought him back? More classic rock stars coming through. <laughs> All of them, baby. Uh, so we will put this up, up on the site for anybody who wants to come in along. Uh, and it's a, a question for Fez uh, from a college student that says this. I was on a museum trip uh, today at MoMA. A classmate of mine happens to be a homosexual. I am not. He's made it clear that he has an interest in me. I've made it clear that I'm not a homosexual in any way. Our class was asked to sit in the theater and watch a film. We all filed in. He decided to come and sit directly next to me. It should be noted that he was drinking before entering the museum. I felt very uncomfortable and started to zone out and imagine where this could be heading if this kid decided to make a move on me once the lights were out. Oof. Um, I thought as though it might be bullshit to say, say, excuse me, man, could you not touch me again? There are situations in life where someone has to get their ass kicked, whether it's right or wrong. I firmly 
believe that this is the truth. I've been cordial to this dude. I don't hate homosexuals. At the same time, I don't cheer when one comes out of the closet. Um, I feel as who you choose to love shouldn't be a big deal either way. I left the theater and the museum entirely before anything could happen. If me, he would have touched me, I would have had to kick his ass. Because it's 2012 and a camera phone would have caught me, a 24-year-old brown male beating the shit out of this little white gay kid probably wouldn't have been favorable to me in a court of law. World star. Uh, I was very angry at the time. And unlike my gay classmate, I was doing my best to think straight. Pun intended. Um, I was angry how if I stayed, my classmates made a move on me, my education could possibly be over, and I'd find myself in jail. Did I do the right thing by leaving before something happened? Um, furthermore, is how do I handle this situation if it happens again in the real world? Sensitive. Society is very sensitive to the bullying thing, and um, rather than deal with issues, I just see anger and blame being spread. All right, we'll open it up to the phone lines because we've never really gotten into this thing of what does, you know, now that the gay marriage thing is accept, blah, blah, blah. So many straight guys have always had that... Um, deal of I don't want to be thought of as gay myself. Let me go over to the Pips, because he's the youngster here. Pips, if a guy hit on you and you turned him down, would you expect him to hit on you again? I would hope he wouldn't, because I would be very clear about it. That way there'd be no problems in the future. So you were actually saying it would become a problem, though. If it was a constant bothering where he started to touch me, yeah, then it becomes a problem. At that point, you're ready to throw hands. Oh, hell yeah. He's going down. Now, uh, Fez, mm -hmm. is that the correct response in your point of view? No, it's not the correct response to hit anybody. If there was a if there was a chick that was making unwanted advances at you. We don't have that problem. <laughs> to be totally honest, the thing here... And the way to look at this is this is a problem that normally women deal with yeah. and men don't deal with. Uh, women get dealt with harassment, being harassed. Normally, if you turn a woman down, she is like almost embarrassed about it. Her mind gets and, erased. Yeah. And <laughs> you probably won't see her again because she knows that not only are you not interested in her, but you find her hideous, it hurts her feelings, and off she goes. So the, the, so that reality that you're bringing up doesn't exist. Well, I think also, listening to that email, this guy that wrote it is looking for an excuse to punch the gay guy. He didn't, I mean, yes, he got, uh, the guy told him that he liked him. But all during that museum theater thing, he never got touched. He got up and left. He kept it, saying, what if something happened? He's but, looking for an excuse. So you're angry with the with the guy? I think he's looking for us and someone else to say, okay, you're allowed to go beat the hell out of this gay guy. All right, so I'm going to go take it back to uh, Pips because he's a younger guy. A younger guy who hasn't kind of found his place in the world doesn't say here's where I am you know they're still looking for identity and if you turn down somebody that an unwanted gay approach right uh -huh. I think for a younger guy he's going to be like hey am I giving off a gay vibe I want to make sure that everyone understands <laughs> you know what I mean I that this is not a gay vibe and to come sit down close to him again unwanted it's not the same thing as I'm not just interested in you. I think that the thing in the pips is for for a younger dude is I don't even want this to be confused about me. But you can't go beat somebody up, beat the crap out of them to prove your heterosexuality. So but you're putting all the emphasis on the 
the guy who's being hit on and none of the responsibility to the guy who's doing the hitting. Where I think there becomes a uh, a certain responsibility to the guy doing the hitting on. That you have to say, if I'm... Hicks, you're nodding here. Uh, if, if you, you, the person needs to realize they're fucking harassing another person. If you keep on fucking trying to fuck another dude, or if you're trying to fuck another, a, a chick, and they keep saying no, you're fucking you turn into a fucking rapist. Right, then if it's harassment, go to the university. Don't sit there and beat the crap out of somebody. Um, again, so you're saying, do you think the gay guy is doing harassment? I no, I don't think. I think the gay the gay guy because the university is going to say, "Dude, this is not a big deal." But I'm telling you, to the young guy, it's a big deal. When I saw when, when Pips went out of his way, when he's explaining that, he actually said, "We're going to make sure this isn't a problem." Because like when a chick hits on you, and she's not your type of woman, you don't think of it as a problem. You know what I mean? You don't take that as, here's something uh, that is really negative. It's up on the uh, iBang right now, too, under a uh, quick uh, question. Let's go over here to Dutch. Dutch, you're on the run of Fed show. Hey, buddy. How are you? Yeah. Hey, I have a concern. I think we're all overlooking the very obvious racial a aspect of this and assuming that the black guy is going to pummel the white kid. How do we not, you know, is this Mike Tyson that he's sitting next to? Like, well, I, 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 the thing is, you're acting like the, that this is going to become a fight. Uh, I think what the black kid is saying is that here I am, a bigger black kid who finds myself getting physical with a smaller white gay kid. It's going to turn into a kind of hate crime instead of what this guy obviously feels like himself is victimized. Now, the other thing, Fez, is that we're told time and time again is in the black community and Spanish community, it's even seen as more as a, an affront to uh, honor. Uh, Jay, Jay in Cleveland, you're in Manifest. Hey, Fez, can I ask you a question honestly? Yes, you and, and you can ask it without having to ask if you can ask it. Okay. How do you honestly believe someone who repeatedly hits on someone and they ask you to stop and they don't stop not harassing? All right. If, if I'm going by the email here, the gay guy told him how he felt about him. They must have been, I'll, I'll use this word, close enough classmates to that the guy felt he could express himself. And sitting next to, uh, so that's not harassment. And then sitting next to someone in a theater isn't harassment. No, 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 no. no. He did, the guy says in the letter, nothing happened. No, 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 you missed something there. He, uh, let, me, let me tell you. Let's suppose if it was your sister, right? And some dude uh, says to your sister, hey, I definitely want to be with you. And your sister's like... No, absolutely not. This is out of the question. And then he comes up and sits next to her in the dark and intimidates her so much that she feels like she needs to get up and leave. You're probably going down there going, dude, how many fucking times you need to be told she no? told you no. Because I think that the weird thing here is for the rest of us is like we don't know what it's like the way a woman, woman does to be pursued <laughs> relentlessly past where we are comfortable with it even when there's some chick who's like crazy about you and you are not interested you never feel that stalking weird shit i mean it's a very weird thing so much that michael douglas made a fucking movie out of it but i guess you've got to be pretty much michael douglas before it gets uh uh Weird. But how many times has, like, let's say a guy expresses feelings for a woman, she's not interested, but she still wants to remain friends? There's nothing in that letter. He told the guy, hey, listen, I'm not gay. I don't think, I think of it's you a, that I way. I think it's a different situation. And I'm not saying that hitting is the answer, but I think there's a real different situation when a straight guy gets approached. And you can't act like that stuff 
doesn't exist. In the same way of a black guy knows that if he keeps hitting on a white woman repeatedly, society is going to view him differently than if he keeps hitting on a black woman repeatedly. It doesn't have to be right or whatever, but society doesn't completely catch up with these things. I would think that if you're a gay guy, knowing that the way where we are in 2012, you have a certain responsibility if you're going to hit on them to not make that person feel uncomfortable without thinking that there's not going to be some kind of repercussion. Um, here's Chris in Buffalo. You're on Fez. Hey, guys. Uh, I was bar hopping one night with my friends, and we just ended up at this shithole on the wall. And uh, we're sitting out at the stools, and I noticed this guy keeps bumping into me on the way to the bathroom. And I finally caught on to the fact that there was it was kind of like a hey there's no room I'm nudging up against you kind of a thing but there was actually like 40 feet worth of room and I turn around my buddies are all laughing at me I didn't know I was even getting hit on but I finally told the guy to stop and then it happened a few more times it was like one of those things where are you fucking serious like it never happens where a chick stalks you but it literally was at the point where I felt not harassed because I'm not weird about it but I felt strange I had to stop and turn on the guy and say listen don't fucking touch me again or shit's going to happen. And he still kind of came after it a little bit. All right, what do you say that, looking. Yeah, that guy <laughs> shouldn't be touching you. I think this is a totally different scenario in the email. Why do, you, why do you see it that way? Why do you see that as a totally different scenario? I think, first of all, the gay guy was honest about his feelings. He didn't, like, try to steal a kiss or anything. I think he honestly approached the guy he was interested in. But can you say, hey, not only, you know, am I not interested, but this changes everything now. This fucking means that we're not fucking hangout friends. This crosses a line. Uh, here's our buddy, Ken Shane. You're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but uh, I don't know if you got to see Louie last night, but it was very close to what you're talking to today in terms of the plot. Well, I don't, th you know, I don't think that it's too close because I thought Louie was just about wanting to be friends with another man and not understanding why. Found I don't, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the fact of can two guys hang out together, hey, does that bring up, to, are people going to think that we're gay? And the interesting thing about Louie was that was also a Latin guy who was very open and friendly, but when he thought even for a second... Louis might have been gay. That ended everything right there. Peace. Yeah, so, that's what I mean. I mean, the, the lifeguard was definitely concerned about what Louis was, was right. thinking about. That's what I was thinking about in terms of some of these people who are calling in and some of the people you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I guess in that way this is similar, but the, the difference is this actually was a gay guy yeah. who was hitting on a classmate and then went over and sat next to him in the dark, and, you know, Fez is saying the gay guy is being somehow this sensitive, nice person, but apparently he's not catching on to the fact, if Fez is right, that you're making a person so fucking uncomfortable that he's getting up and, and leaving. Um, okay. And you're acting like there's no responsibility that you uh, carry there. And let me tell you something, and I think every guy has known this, that he's been friends with a girl and said to her, finally, you know what, I'm really crazy about you and the, all this friendship stuff. And boom, ruins that friendship. Done. Never see it's, them ever again. The friendship again. is over. <laughs> this this <laughs> thing already exists. And uh, thanks so much, Ken. Appreciate it. And I will tell you the, the, the reason is that there is lying to a lot of those friendships. That when you are really attracted to a woman, but you're acting like, I just want to be buddies. Friend zone. And then finally you tell her, no, this wasn't the friend zone. This is the fuck zone. <laughs> <laughs> she could think everything else has been a lie. Because it has. Um, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Um, I, will, I will say this, though. The... The weirdness of this is that never once have we sat around, I don't think as guys, and really thought of what it's like to be a woman pursued 
by some fucking dirtbag like us. Drunk fucking asshole. Who believes that on the 18th time they will finally give in. Yeah, let's fuck, baby. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that sounds fucking crazy. I don't think guys really know what it's like to finally hear that. Well, what if you just gave me a hand job? And then, then we're, you know. And hey, then everybody wins, right? Um, because if you believe in romantic comedies, sooner or later you're going to wear her down. And she will see that, that she should have been with you. Um, let's go over here to uh, Dustin in New Mexico. You're on my face. Hey, buddies, what's going on? Hey. Hey, I think I got a solution to this whole problem. We're just going to cut all this guessing out of it. We got these uh, little gold stars, and we can uh, have all the gay guys just wear these little gold stars, you know? And that way we can easily identify them. Yeah, that's your final solution? Yeah, and then, you know, they can all live together in these little... Uh, all right, since Feds didn't go for the bait, I'm going to move on. I would have fucking lit that guy up, but that's me. Um, let's uh, move over here to Scott, Wyoming. You're on Fez. Well, first of all, the gold star means that we haven't been with a woman, so that won't work. Okay. But uh, I, this is one of my biggest pet peeves as a queer. Um, I tell all my straight friends, the first time they hit on you, it, it's a compliment. Somebody's telling you they like you. Second time, if they touch you, you tell them the third time, they're going to get busted in the face. And the problem is, if they do, then the queer is going to cry hate crime. So they're kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't. I think they that's exactly right where now. this this guy was coming along, where, exactly. you know, he's a bigger brown kid. This is a smaller white kid. And if he let it... And look... This fucking dude is actually dealing with some anger issues. Sure. I don't have a lot of respect for people who don't have fucking street sense. If you don't know you're fucking with somebody that shouldn't be fucked with, to me, that's the stupidest thing that you can do in life. It's inviting just fucking his shit time. And this guy knew he was going to take himself out of the situation. I mean... This time, though. Yeah. You know, this fucking time. Uh, let's go over to ECW Zombie. You're on the Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, uh, Fezzy. I, I, yeah, Fezzy, I don't know if you worked in the angle here, brother, but it, it just seems like it because this dude clearly in the details of the email pointed out that, like, look, this is th this, th this guy, I've tried to make it clear before that I'm straight. I've tried to tell this kid before that I'm not interested. And then he even said that when the guy came in, that he smelled like alcohol. So come on, he, he, go, he goes in and he sits right next to him. It's probably one of those big college classrooms where he could, the kid could have sat anywhere, but he goes and sits right next to this dude. He's just trying to mind his business. Faz, I'm going to let you, uh, thanks, Zombie. I'm going to let you jump into this. You would seem to be the expert in this, but you're kind of laid back about it. I think you're getting a lot of people saying that we're not 100% here that's I think homophobia it, to think that because the guy sat down next to him, he was going to it, try to physically attack him. It's no, just pure homophobia. It, the homophobia would be this. He doesn't want to be perceived as gay. He's turned the gay guy down, and now the guy who's been drinking sits up and sits next to him in the dark. The kid, the straight kid, is already saying, I don't want to be perceived that way. You saw it right away with Pips, where he's going, look, first time, yeah, second time, we've got a problem. That's a young guy trying to say, here's my fucking safe place. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that exists. It's the straight guy but who's, right away, who's imagining that he's going to be, that there's going to be an attempted rape in a dark theater. That's where his mind is going. It's That's not, his problem. It's not just that, though. He doesn't want to be perceived as gay. It's this is where it does come in that where it's similar to the Louis thing, where Louis said last night is straight men are the only ones who want to make <laughs> yeah. a fucking announcement of that. It does exist though, and right away when he's trying to find his comfort zone, you're calling him a homophobic, a bigot, somebody who's a bully again. He doesn't want to be in this situation. The interesting thing is. 
we let our women be in this situation. Constantly. We let our sisters, our daughters, in this, our friends in this situation, yet when it happens for us... No. Zero fucking tolerance. <laughs> That's where we have a weird zero tolerance. And I don't think that you have perceived what I've talked about yet. I don't think that you've got that it exists. Whether I don't it's... think the guy may, uh, you know, he says he told him that he wasn't interested and he's not gay. But then he also went into this big thing about I have no problem who loves each other. I don't hate gay yes. people. Yes, yes. So it sounds to me like he didn't tell the guy stay away from me altogether. Oh, he and did. He did. See, that's what that's becomes that thing where you're acting like he kind of likes it. And I'm telling you, look at the young guys. Look at Pips, who you know he's not a fucking bigot, but he doesn't want any part of this. And even Chris Stanley, to another sense, he's this is a thing for fucking young guys. Uh, here's Mona. You're on manifest. Mona, we got you. Move along. Here's Mark in Canada. You're on Fez. Hey, guys. Uh, Fez, when Ron was using your sister as a comparison, when the guy made your sister feel so uncomfortable that she had to leave, she was essentially stopping a date rape or a possible rape from happening. Same thing with this black guy. When he got up and left the theater, he was stopping a possible rape by this no he wasn't he was stopping yes, him was. listen to the yes, email he was. he was stopping himself from beating up a gay guy that's about, what he was saying the, then why don't you congratulate him for that how about if you read because i think he carefully i think he was uh running scenarios in his head and he wants to know he, it's okay to beat up a gay guy but no just the opposite he didn't he did not do it. He actually took himself out of a situation, which in a way, in a lot of neighborhoods, is being a punk or a bitch. All right? But he's already done that. He doesn't feel good that he can't feel safe and okay sitting there. Uh, or doing that whole stand your ground thing. I think that you have to understand exactly where the other person is at. Um, let's go over here to... Uh, let's go to Don, Texas. You're my Fez. Hi, Ron. I think the part that Fez is missing here is that you don't have to physically touch somebody to, to harass them. Just being in your personal space. The guy was violating this guy by after being told that he wasn't interested in him by coming and sitting right next to him. It's a movie theater. How much how much room could you possibly have? We don't know. We don't know where it was totally filled, where you could have sat. I mean, I don't know whether you've ever been to theaters with straight guys. They sit two seats apart. Yeah, I don't want to You don't sit to right next to your your friend at a theater unless it's packed. fucking packed to the rafters. If three guys go to a theater, they sit they take up six seats. This is a known fucking fact. You would never sit two guys <laughs> next to each other. Um, let me read some of the stuff that uh, people are come up. Um, no, some of these I don't want to think. All right, let's go to Shower Ben. Shower Ben says if the gay guy physically touches him after, uh, he can beat him up after a warming. Uh, if it's verbal, he can report him and threaten him. I would say this. I think if you go to, if you're in university, let's say you're 19, 20 years old, and you report there's a gay guy who keeps following me or talking to me, and I don't want to be friends with him, you are going to be seen as a bigot and a weirdo, and you're going to look like a guy who can't take care of himself. Oh, yeah. That whole go to the authorities thing. That's sometimes uh, the worst thing you can do. Sometimes it's <laughs> a bizarre thing. Like if Pips came to me and said, Kokomo Joe is leering at me. <laughs> He's standing too close. I can't imagine I wouldn't say stop it. Rod, I can feel his breath in the back of my neck. It's fucking weird. Um, but if you listen to the kid's email, if he starts hitting him, he's also out of the school. So uh, he yes, has, he has to do. But I don't. What I'm trying to tell you is, I don't think. Um, 
I don't think that you you get the fact that he does not want to be thought that way. He that's the fucking problem here. And that's the thing that you're not that if you went back a few years ago and thought, do I want people to perceive me as gay? You didn't want anybody. So you used to go out of your way to say it was a character. Even we knew what it wasn't. All right, Liz Sets Fire wrote this up. Touching or making your presence known to me, if I say I'm not interested, fuck off. See, women, I think, would have a better understanding than this than any guy. Um, Dr. Baloney says a lot of gay guys can handle themselves in fights. Act as if a gay person can put their hands on you, but are victims as soon as you fight back. You're painting gay guys out to be weak. Come on, Fez. I will tell this. I've seen a lot of transsexuals that can fucking fight. I've seen transsexuals. I saw a fucking transsexual beating a fucking sailor up one time. Shit. The streets of fucking Marcus Hawk, PA. And I was a little kid, and I said to myself, those fucking broads can fight. Because they have to. They fight almost every day. When you fight one of those fucking chicks, it's like fighting a fucking middleweight. You know? Like, you think, hey, look at that little dude. But all of a sudden, he's hands of stone. Fucking veteran. Yeah. Um... Let's go over here to Michael in Texas. You're on Fez. Hey, Ron. It'd be a great show. Fez, what would you say if some skinheads who clearly disliked homosexuals started sitting by this gay guy every single day and making him uncomfortable, and then you would be the first one over here going, oh, they need to leave him alone. They're harassing him. Are they touching him? Are they saying threatening things to him? No, nope, then... They're just sitting by him. But you know that they're the type of people he doesn't want to be. Let's suppose the skinhead came and sat on either side of a gay guy. Mm. And the gay guy said, even though nothing, you can feel physical intimidation. There was some... I think when a guy fucking turns somebody down, when he turns another gay guy down, that gay guy has to say, all right, I made this other person uncomfortable... It's now my responsibility. What am I going to do to make them feel comfortable again? And sometimes the best thing that you could do for a person in any situation is to leave them alone. Back the fuck off. I think, again, there's sometimes that people want to bring up um, the, the, the fact that somehow we all have these rights. But there is a street thing. All right, here's Millie Hatchett. She writes... It's a matter of respect. If I tell someone I'm not interested and they consider and they continue to follow me around, I'm throwing an elbow. I don't think, I think the interesting part of this is we don't know what women go through. I can't imagine it. And I'm sure it's, most of us have went too far pursuing a woman <laughs> in our lives, no matter who you are, unless you're just really the shyest fucking idiot ever you've had to have made a woman feel uncomfortable it's part of being a man <laughs> at some point well if you're even if you're just fucked up and you're at a bar and oh it's a stranger, i can't right? imagine and you're just hitting on some bra that's trying to buy her drinks or whatever and it's oh like, god <laughs> you're just fucking rocked fucking drunk and this world's like why won't why is this drunk asshole harassing me um graham you're on the manifest show hey what's going on uh I was calling one time, I was hanging out with this old head dude who used to DJ at the local roller rink, and uh, I was giving him a ride to go pick up some coke, and uh, he asked me if uh, he could suck my dick, and I said, nah, you know, I don't swing that way, but I did, uh, I gave him props, I was like, dude, you got a lot of balls asking me that, because if I was somebody else, you might be getting beat to death right now, but uh, I want to ask Fez, you don't think a gay guy can sexually harass another guy? No, I think he totally could. But I don't think this is harassment in this uh, case with the email. Here's what Queen Elizabeth said. Uh, you don't have to tolerate any attention you don't want, whether gay or straight. He said, no thanks. Fez will always side with the gay because he doesn't have the capacity to see the other side of the story. Again, here is the weird thing. Now that this thing is so much more open, straight guys are going to have to look at this and say, how does... As long as the world has been around, if you were approached with a gay guy, you threw fucking hands. My grandfather uh, used to like to rock a flower, an actual flower on his lapel, and fucking used to get approached. (laughs) 
And my mother said, oh, yeah, he had to knock a fucking guy out once. Because back in those days, if you fucking wore a flower on your lapel, that I guess people sign. thought you were gay. Like, oh, finally, hey, what's up? It's like, if he was, it's like if he was comfortable walking around with a blue bandana in his fucking back pocket. <laughs> but I heard that when I was a kid, and I fucking cracked up. Um, let's go over here to Tim. Tim, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, what was the name? Hit on a guy and see if he hits you back or something? <laughs> Tim, that's we've got a guy who does that. He actually invented it, and he did it very well. Oh, you blow. You suck at it. Uh, let's go over to Ed in Indiana. You're on Fez. Hey, I've got to uh, decide on Fez's uh, point. Because we oh! don't want to... Ed in Indiana. Getting it on. Every Everything, I am straight as an arrow. But oh, yeah, yeah. You're your head, Ed. Your dick is. Yeah, on the DL. What up? Oh, <laughs> you got it. Okay. The, the guy's being a little presumptive here. The guy, he told him, all right, I don't fly that way. Now, you expect the guy not to even be friends with him. Yes. To to him, sit next to him. No. That happens that. all the time. It well, happens you know, all the time. And I really do think to act like we don't think that that's true is living a lie. It's living a lie. And I, I would think if I were to... He had to know he was dealing with a straight guy. And that's the fucking problem with this. That if, let's say, Pips, where it's a younger fucking dude. You know what I mean? He, Pips would immediately start saying... Am I giving off a gay vibe in your fucking world? Are other people thinking that about me? Am I a magnet for this sort of attention now? Oh, that'd be terrible. Um, I don't know. I just really fucking don't know. Here's Tim. Tim, you're on the Run of Fed show. Yeah, Fez uh, is trying to paint the, the black kid as being the bully, but I see it as the gay guys being the bully... He came, he, he hit on the black guy the first time, he politely told him, no thanks, whatever, you know, I, I, I'm not like I don't that. think he hit on him. I think he told him how he felt about him, but I don't think he hit on him That's uh, trying to him. pin him up against the lockers. If... But, the, but the, black guy, the black guy doesn't want to be the bully. He's trying to remove himself from the situation. The gay kid has already been told, I, you know, I'm not interested in you, thank you. If you're in school and some kid's throwing spitballs at you, you tell him to stop. After they don't stop, you got to do something about it. And if it's swinging, it's swinging. So the black kid removed himself from that situation so it didn't have to come to swinging where he knew he would get in trouble. All right, I'm going to tell you something. I think, and I didn't mention it at the time, uh, but I cringed pretty hard. I thought Fez said something incredibly inappropriate at the start of the show. I thought that the Steve C thing that you said was incredibly inappropriate. And it really was weird to me. Um, and I would think, how many people would have taken that the wrong way? And oh. it's just a weird thing that we have in our society. It's just a weird thing that we have in our society. I don't think that, you know, even if we're changing laws, I don't think that we're 100% there yet. And most people can, you know, I get accused of being the fucking liberal all the time. I just think that the, that the street thing has to be paid attention to one way or another. You have to know what the other person is um, feeling and thinking. Um, if you're trying to coax another person into trying something new, You've got to be open to that. If I fucking go up to a guy and say, hey, you seem like a fucking cool dude. You want to shoot fucking dope with me? And he goes, no, I'm totally straight. I take it in my mind that I've changed our relationship. <laughs> I've changed our fucking relationship. Yeah. None's going to be the same after that shit. He's going to think of you as a, a fucking different type of fucking guy. Um, no, you know what I was talking about at the beginning of the show? No. Not at all with the Steve C thing that you said? I, right away, it's like I, I fucking cringe with a little bit. If you want to go back and isolate that, just find the... 
the Fez thing. Um, here's uh, Gary. Gary, you're on the run of Fez show. He should have just played hard to get and straight oh, up all along God. and take one. Mike, you're on the run of Fez. Who's on the phone today? Kokomo. Kokomo's the I worst run. at that. I, I agree with the guy that the, uh, the, the gay guy's the bully. I mean, um, he's, using the power, he's using the threat of the black guy being expelled if he does anything to stop him. Also, he'd be real ridiculed by his friends and made fun of if he reports him. You know, a school's not going to do nothing if he does report him. And, he, and at the worst... If he does anything to stop it, he could be charged with a hate crime. So he he's kind of, you know, bullying the black guy. To, to, anyway, no, no, I I get it. I I I I get what you're saying. And to me, that the fact that the dude said I'm not interested should have been. Now I need to give that person some fucking space. And I think even with a girl, you can't always go back to. Hey, we're just friends again. After that shit, no, that's, that's impossible. It's done. The friendship's over. Right? She's, no, you're looking to bang her. Not only that, but you've said this urge that I have is more important than our friendship. Oh yeah. Our, this urge that I have supersedes your comfort level with our friendship. Yeah. We can no longer be friends. Is basically what they're saying. We need. I need something more or nothing else. And there, I doubt very much. That there is a girl that we know uh, who hasn't been driven home by a friend to have him pull over somewhere and given the this is how I really feel about you speech and Let's give it a and shot. felt uncomfortable. You know what I mean? And felt like, uh... I wonder how often women can see that coming. Or if they're just, someone just told some guys are maybe better at being friends than others. I think, think a lot of guys are really good at that. Yeah, and um, <laughs> Zietz is actually calls it like the slow play, where he feels, and then he'll, he, you know, the thing that I used to fight about Zito about is he actually gets angry. Oh hell yeah! Um, let's go over here to uh, Eric. Eric, you're on the Run of Fed show. Eric. Eric? Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah. So I was just wondering, maybe the reason that Fez is defending this guy is because uh, that's kind of his MO, uh, going after straight guys. Is that some of it for you, Fez? Well, I've, I've I had the big crushes in my life have been on straight guys, but I never went and told any of them, listen, this is how I feel about you. Did I they, never had that conversation. Did any of them become aware of it? Um, I, I can only imagine, not that they said anything to me, but I can only imagine, because like we've talked about, everybody knew. So I would, I would, I would say yes, that they th did know about it. Are you still friends? Um, let's no, talk about no. the big one who, no, was, you no, know. not still friends. And no, not at all. All, all. some kind of anger there, right? Mm hmm There's some kind of anger. Yeah. And you are uh, okay with it? You're okay with the fact that the anger exists there? Um, yeah, because I'll just because I think I'm over that. You and... are. They're not. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. You're still only seeing this from your point of view. The fact that that guy that you were not only buddies with, but you felt a lot of things for, is still very angry with you. You don't give a fuck about. Shit. That's a weird thing, and it exists. Um, let's uh, go back to this. Um, Shrekalov says, I think what Fez is missing, that this particular gay guy sounds like a creep. Not that all gay guys are creeps, but this is one. Uh, just like not all straight dudes are creeps, but most of them are. Yeah, I think, I, I would agree. I think most men are <laughs> creeps. And I think that this guy just uh, uh, came after this one dude like most of us have gone after women before. All right, Rorschach, who always has an interesting angle on things. I mean, the thing about Rorschach is he has the experience in life 
that he's able to step back. Where with Pips, they're all open nerves there. Everything about him is an open nerve. He's a youngster. Yeah, he's a young guy. Rorschach can take back a look. And Rorschach says, if a gay guy came on to me, I would say, flattering, but no. And then I would bend over in front of him and put my finger in my mouth what? until he manned up, took control of me, and fucked me like I should be fucked. Now, the interesting part of that is, oh, I believe, yeah. the finger in the mouth, because it's so pouty. You know what I mean? Like, all right, what are we doing? Baby play? Is uh, that where this is taking it? You want that You, know, you want no? me to set a fucking crib up and nail you in there? Let's do this. I'll fucking put a bib on you that says I'm daddy's girl. That's how we're going to fucking play this from now on. Or in Rorschach's case, I'm daddy's boy. No, 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 no. You wear those cum panties to the store with me. That's how we're rolling. You belong to me now. Uh, you know that most guys have done that. Just give me a kiss. Just one. I just want one kiss, and then I'm stop. And it's and when they're fucked up. And this guy probably identified that this guy smelled like liquor and shows the sat next to him. This guy's gotten drunk and done that before with a, to a woman. I'm positive. You see, do you see what fucking Hicks is saying here? Yeah, I mean, yes, the guy shouldn't have been drunk. What? <laughs> no, that's not at all. Not at all. But at he all. didn't. Uh, the, the guy admits nothing happened in the theater. Did you? Did you uh, pick up the inappropriateness when Fez kind of crossed the line when we were eulogizing Steve Say a little bit? Well, there was there was a moment there that maybe was a little odd. I really don't even know if I want to replay. <laughs> I know Pips has it, but I'm not uncomfortable. I'm not comfortable with it. Um, what's that noise? You rubbing your leg? No, mm -mm. I thought there was a muskrat underneath you. Um, let's go over here to uh, Adam. Adam, you're on the run of Fez show. Yeah, I laugh at this situation here because all the guys that are calling in and say they beat the shit out of them are the same fucking guys that would fucking harass a girl. You know, when you know, is this with a straight couple? You know, that say anything moment is fine, but if it's a gay guy doing it to another gay guy, then you just beat the shit out of him. But if it's a straight couple, yeah, go to our house fifty times, put a radio in the air while it's raining, it's fine. And yeah, I think that we're crazy. I think that we're crazy that way, and I certainly wouldn't put up with it for, with any of the women in my family who had somebody following them around like that. Fucking, I'd be like, this has got to fucking stop, dude. Yeah. I'm fucking giving you the one warning right now. Yeah, step off. You know off. what I mean? Step off. This is you've been fucking told no. Stop fucking hanging around. Um. All right, uh, here's from uh, Holly's in uh, Seattle. In my softball playing days, I was hit on by a few lesbians. Whoa! Yeah! Very uncomfortable and creepy, but what could I do? I didn't stand a chance against them. One looked like Mike Piazza. So I simply leaned over put my finger in my mouth, oh. and let them take control. Damn, Halls. <sighs> Kevin, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, buddy. Hey, yeah. I think if we look at Scotty, when he tried to kiss Dirt Diggler New Year's Eve, it completely changed their relationship going forward. And all he wanted to do was just kiss him on the mouth, just once. Um... Yeah, that was the weird thing. Everybody looks back at that fucking scene. And do you re remember the scene, Fez? Uh-huh. Now, the weird thing is when I look at that, right? Because Dirk was not fucking homophobic, and he, but he wasn't interested in Scotty. No, no. But when I look at that, I think Scotty is being selfish. And I think that's how women probably see a lot of fucking men. That you're doing this for you. It's not about me at all. It's only about you yeah, right now. All. That becomes the central part of it. And what I think the pips in life are saying, and again, I think only younger guys are going 
to fucking see it this way because obviously if it happened to me, I'm not going to get all fucking wild about it. But I know who I am. I know what my life is. So I, I would probably find it to be much more comedic. But I certainly understand what it's like to be in your early 20s, you know? I certainly understand when, you know, those guys that say all that fucking crazy shit. Um, here's a TMZ report. Spy report. Spy report. Spy report. In the hospital due to cardiac arrest. Spy report. Shit. Spy report. Spy report. The big man, Michael Clark Duncan. Spy report. Spy report. Oh, Spy boy. report. Didn't he just do O&A? Uh, a couple months ago. Man, there's something around those guys. There's something around O and A that's getting very, very jinxy. This isn't. Maybe it's. Maybe it's the studio. Maybe. I'll tell you this. It feels like there's a darkness on the edge of town, though. If I can, if I can just quote the boss again. You why may. shouldn't I? Do, do, do. Liz sets fire, says, if Fez hit on Mooch more than once, I don't see it going well. <laughs> Let me, uh, Mooch got bit by a rat the other day and he has the plague. Oh, no. No, he sent me this thing. Did he send it to you that the, no. pla the plague is going around in Oregon? <laughs> what the fuck? I thought it's 2012 here. Oregon's in the United States. How fucking grimy are they getting out there? Yeah, I think that Mooch probably took a pet rat from <gasps> fucking Ireland there with him. The troubles are coming to fucking Oregon. Uh, uh, Drew, you're on the run of Fest show. <laughs> Maybe he can do good. Jim, you're on the run of Fest show. Jim. Hey, Ron. I just think it's a, it's a respect issue. If I was going to go out with a woman... You know, if she turned me down, that's just a respect for her that I'll leave her alone. All right, say it again. I'm kind of confused by it. Well, if I ask a woman out and she turns me down, out of respect, she's not interested, so I would leave her alone. Just out of respect. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that was my point completely. That when you say, I'm crossing the friendship zone with a woman, it changes everything and you can't take it back. It and then it's like, and it can happen. I think it can happen two ways. Either it's just completely off, then it's done, or maybe you put up for a little while, time. try to keep friend, stay a friend. But but give time. You know what I mean? Let yeah, time yeah. take care of that. Let um, and again, the stone said it. The time is on your side. There you go. Uh, but you can't act like now. I'm going to come sit next to you in the dark <laughs> and fucking sit right in the fucking seat, all fucked up. It's like we never even said that, right, baby? <laughs> right? Like nothing ever happened.